Welcome back to the channel folks. This week I'm starting something new with Simon Weir here. You might remember Simon, we've been on the podcast a couple of times, famous for his Bikers Britain book. So what we're thinking we're going to do is we're going to film all those routes, put them onto uh, camera just for you. And he's also got a new book coming out and this is the first route from that new book. Stick around and find out more. Oh, I sound like TMF. <laughs> Right folks, welcome back to the channel. So, here's Simon Weir. How are you doing Simon? I'm good, I'm good. Awesome. Right folks, this is the plan. Actually Simon, what is the plan? We're going to test one of the rides for my new book. Uh huh. It's a nice short one. It's all designed to be good, easy ride outs you can do with your mates at the weekend. Yeah. And we're starting off from Sudbury and we're going to go out through some of the little local roads around here through Suffolk. Nice, short, but some good fun roads. Beautiful. And they all start in petrol stations. So we are here at the BP in Sudbury. Sudbury, yep. And this is going to be the start of this ride. We'll tell you more about it as we go. After you, sir. Cool. I've been looking forward to this, Simon. <laughs> Well, I hope it doesn't disappoint. That's <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> Sadly, we've got to get around the one-way system first, but uh, every ride has to have an easy place for people to meet. Normally, a town petrol station is the easiest one. Yeah, it makes sense. So this is a lovely little place for a coffee stop, but obviously, if you're starting from Sudbury, it's a bit early, which is why we didn't stop at the brewery on the way into town. <laughs> or if you're our age, you'll probably need a pee by now. It's been 11 <laughs> minutes, so... Um, what is this? What's this place called? This is called Long Melford. Long Melford, right. Very nice. Once you get across this big village green, yep. we get out onto the decent roads. Gotcha. Folks, if you're wondering why we're toddling along, we kind of, we've had a gentleman's agreement here and we, we are going to be trying to uh, be little choir boys in the towns and villages and where it's appropriate, we'll make some progress. We'll put it that way, all right? It might not all be on film, <laughs> but we will be having a bit of fun. But there is always a place for inappropriate behavior. Hang on, hang on. Nationals! Beautiful. Still a lot more traffic than I'm used to seeing down here. Is it? And I seem to be quiet because we're in the week. And at the weekends it's quieter than this. Oh, these are nice, man. These are nice roads. Good surface as well, aren't they? Generally, that's what I look for. Now we're into a 40 here. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I missed the start of that. <laughs> that's all right. There were sort of. I only saw it as we were on them, to be honest. They need to do a bit of bush pruning. There they are. There they are, people. So I'm lining them up. I can see this traffic coming, though, unfortunately, over the hedge. So I always hang back a bit off things because I like to see what's coming out from underneath the car. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Nice. Are you still there? Or have I lost you? No, no, I'm still here. Beautiful. Wasn't sure if I'd lose you with the Bluetooth connection there. It's a good test of it, isn't it? It's actually quite a good connection, this. Normally with Bluetooth, it sounds like there's a construction site going on. I get loads of banging and it's, it's really bad, but this is good. Yeah, works a treat. We, we actually used, Sean, if you're watching this, the likeable rider. I'll put a link down below. Sean has a fantastic step-by-step -step video on how to connect the Cardinal Pack Top Bold to the Senna. That's a 30K, isn't it? It is, yeah. Yeah, to connect these two. Because you can't use the direct mesh, unfortunately, between, you can't cross-platform it with direct mesh. It's only one or the other. Yeah. And you also can't just connect via normal Bluetooth intercom mode between these two. I don't know why. I think it's like an Apple Android type thing. So there's a set way you have to do it. And Sean's got a great vid. I'll leave that down below. So cheers, Sean. Thank you for that. Oh, beautiful. Just gotta watch the surface on this bit. It's a good surface as well at the moment, isn't it? It's not too bumpy at all. No, it's quite polished though. When it's wet, it's a little bit slippery. 
I'm well over the white line there, but that was just purely because I could see there was nothing coming. <laughs> you don't need to explain yourself to me. For the benefit of the viewers at home. <laughs> You could be Valentino Rossi and you'll still get people going, oh, I wouldn't have done it like that. <laughs> the joys of the internet. Now this is another bit that I thought was droneable. Yeah, yeah, it is actually, yeah, this is very nice and open. have a bit of fun on here, can't you? <laughs> it's all good riding on the streets. <laughs> uh, now I'm not going to push the overtake because we're turning hard right. Gotcha. So it would just be kind of rude to overtake him and then slam the brakes on. So I'll just do him on the exit. <laughs> it's much more polite. <laughs> Said the vicar to the nun. Or the choir boy. Oh, I should have gone with you. What's wrong with me? <laughs> Just effortless. What's that you're riding there? Uh, this is a cross tourer. Uh -huh. um, I had to do the launch of the bike back in 2012. Right. Um, and it's unchanged since then, so. <laughs> what do you think of it? I know it's not a GS. <laughs> there are things that the GS can do better, um, but actually, there are things that I don't need it to do. Yep. And this is the kind of riding I do you know, big, fast tarmac roads and when I got it specifically for the pillion seat because it's a great bike too up. Okay. So compared with my Z1000SX which is my other bike, the bike I rode around the world on, yeah. that's a torture device as far as my girlfriend's concerned. <laughs> so this is for doing big trips. To be honest this probably suits the way I ride whereas the SX suits the way I like to pretend I can ride. <laughs> yeah. Another belt and lovely little road this. When I look back on like me as a rider when I first started riding and how I am now, but I would I just would have hated coming down roads like this on my on my uh, Jixa. I'd have just been like, no, God no, you know? But I, I like the big open fast A roads that you could just twist the throttle, lean the bike in the bends, and now I'm like, no, I love I love these scratchers. Well, I, I think the thing is, anyone can go fast in a straight line. Yeah, yeah. But also, anyone can put a speed camera up to catch you. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So these roads, you get to, to ride a bit. You get lovely scenery. They're normally pretty quiet. I mean, after that initial rumble, we had some traffic. We've done, what, one overtake? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's been fine so far. Lovely. Yeah, and that, that's pretty standard. The things you can never guarantee are traffic and um, road conditions, because yeah, roads that were great when you first rode them, 18 months later can be horrendous. Nosh nose. I just love hitting the road. Yeah. It is awesome. Nothing better. This is probably an important point to keep in. This is a really easy turning to miss. Okay. Because you're kind of getting on it and it feels really good. But actually, this is where people will maybe go astray if they do the route themselves. 
is you need to not miss this turning to Moulton. So you're going, you're turning right, but effectively you're going straight on. Yeah, absolutely. On that beautiful left-hand sweeper. <laughs> Honestly, the ones that follow are worth it. Oh, this is lovely, man. <laughs> Molten. Very nice. There they are. Let me hear you. Nationals. This is a full come to a stop. It's like riding with an examiner. <laughs> I mean, the thing you have to watch out down here is the horses crossing. I mean, if you have a look... Oh, there's the race course in there, isn't there? Uh, well, this is all just the, the studs, this is all the training area. The way the traffic seems to be queuing up suggests to me that there's a whole load of horses crossing the road somewhere up ahead. Gotcha. I came through the other day and there must have been 30 of them trotted across into their stud, all with little blue blankets with Dubai written on. All oh, right. There, there must be four or five hundred horses here, and pretty much every day they're out there exercising on the gallops. God, I didn't realise it was that many. Oh, it, it's astonishing. It's huge. Right then, folks, we have just done the uh, coffee stop in Newmarket. That's on your route, isn't it? It is. It'll be marked on the Sudbury route. Stop at Newmarket for coffee. Beautiful. And we went to an Italian place called, was it Cortado? Cortado, yeah. Cortado, yeah, we, sh we went there. Lovely coffee, recommend the chocolate brownie. It is exquisite. <laughs> we didn't point two to get out. Austin Powers. Sadly, we're going to have to go around the one-way system from here, but it's worth it for the chocolate brownie. <laughs> Said the vicar to the choir boy. Yes. Now we've got traffic chaos here, so I'm going to use a little bit of local rat run knowledge. We should go down the high street past the clock tower, but we're not. We're going to go straight over, purely to avoid the congestion where they've shut the main road. Yeah, if you didn't catch that before, folks, it looks like, uh, was it the M11? Uh, the A11, yeah. A yeah, it looks like on the A11 it's been shut and they've diver diverted a load of traffic through Newmarket, hence why it's so busy. It's not normally this busy. So we've had coffee stop, cake stop, and uh, let's get back on the open road. Yep. <laughs> Where are those signs, Simon? Where are they? Uh, it's just around the corner, followed by a quite impressive jump over a railway crossing. Oh, beautiful. Right, let's see you on camera. You're not a chat, not on this one. Nationals! Nice, nice bit of road this. It's only a short stretch because we'll be turning left. Okay. Just around the corner. Oh. And there's the left-hand turn sign. That right-hander would catch you out if you were getting a lick on, wouldn't it? Because the chevrons aren't till you're sort of committed round that bend. Yeah, it bites ever so slightly. It's yeah, not yeah. Quite constant. It's like the old Spanish roads, isn't it, up in the mountains? You, yeah. you, you think you're all set up, and all of a sudden they double back on themselves. This section has two things that always make me a little cautious. A slightly chewed up surface. Yeah. And just here on the left, a roadside tribute. So these are things that make me just take it a little steadier. A roadside tribute? Yeah, the, the cross and some flowers. Oh, right. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, lovely. 
level a little humpback. <laughs> Beautiful. It's a lovely flowing bit of road, isn't it? Oh, it's a lovely road. How do you find these then? Do you just literally go out and scout? O originally, I appreciate now you'll get people contacting you going, have you tried this, this, but uh, when you first started? I mean, this one I, I found, um, just I had a friend in New, moved to Newmarket briefly, then left again, moved back to Essex. Um, but he kind of showed me this one and the, the road that we took into Newmarket, which is broadly parallel with it, mm -hmm. uh, they were shown to me by a friend. Um, other areas, it is a case of, I was very fortunate to spend 17 years doing bike tests where you're able to get out and, yeah, we're going to do this test somewhere different. Yeah, got gotcha. you. And so we'd try and find that. And especially uh, when I was on Ride, Ride is such a reader-focused magazine, we always try and get readers involved with the tests. You'd find someone who's in the right area with the previous model of bike. So you, you meet up and you ride the old one versus the new one. When I was doing that, we had the budget to be able to go take a crew of two testers and a photographer I mean, I'd have a three-day trip yeah. to go away to Snowdonia and stay there and bring people there and get them to show us their roads. Gotcha. And things like that. That was, a, that was a great benefit. And then we started doing, taking the touring stuff more seriously. Um, I spent ages just compiling other people's recommendations of roads and going and checking them out. <laughs> I mean, it reached the point where there's almost nothing done around the office. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. I tell you that cross or that cross tour has got a bit of pork on it. It's got good grunt. Uh, I'm back into another village. Yeah, gotcha. This is the villagey section of the route. The necessary evil to link the good bits. But at least they're through pretty villages. You're not going through a housing estate where you're being stoned or bombarded <laughs> with litter. It gives you a chance to actually have a look at what's around about you as well though, doesn't it? Yeah. Straight over the A143. I tell you, I do find this jacket, I've got the Speedy Metro Mover, I think it is. I thought to myself, this would be a cracking summer jacket, because it's supposed to be uh, waterproof, and I thought it's textile, you know, it'll be great. It's actually really warm. Re I don't think I could wear it in Spain. I've got a mesh jacket now. Mesh jackets are deceptive. When it's really hot, they're great, they're, they're great. And when it's anything less than absolutely perfect, they are freezing. <laughs> There's no kind of middle ground. Yeah, Rich, Richie Vida, I remember on his uh, American tour that he did, he did that, he thought it was so hot, he stopped, they all stopped and went into a local bike shop, and he bought a mesh jacket, and he was saying how good it was over there, and then <laughs> he's worn it over here, and he was just freezing his nips off. Yeah. <laughs> this is a lovely couple of bends, isn't it? it? It's a lovely stretch. This bit, there's generally much less of the villaginess. Calford Green. Catches you by surprise, all of a sudden it's like nationals, go! They were beautiful bends, by the way. I love this serpentine wall. Oh, yeah. Wow, that's weird. I've never seen one of them before. Was the builder drunk when he made that? Or she? No, it, it's a really clever thing. It's, uh, it uses half as many... It's only one brick wide. So to get a wall that long, if you want to make it strong enough, you have to build it two bricks wide. But if you build it in the curve, the curve gives it strength, so you use half as many bricks. Every day is a school day, folks. Eh? <laughs> Every day. And you thought you were just coming along for a ride in the country. This is one of the things I try and do with the routes, even when the two sort of main B roads are quite well known. I've used them in other routes. This road is a, it's unclassified, it's properly quiet. And unless you're a local, you won't know it. Gotcha. And so that's always the, the aim, is to try and put something in there that is a little bit beyond the obvious. Mostly the routes aren't for people who live around an area, because they'll know the road's there. They're for people who are going to 
go that extra half an hour to get somewhere new. Got you. Yeah, they want to try something different. There, there needs to be something that hopefully you, can't, you wouldn't figure out for yourself, or it would be maybe a bit of a gamble. Well, hopefully if I've tested it, I can tell you it's not a gamble. The ones that don't work, don't go with the books. So. <laughs> well, this has been a top day, mate. Enjoyed this. Now, we set off at 10 o'clock. It's currently 10 to 2, but we have had a lot of faff, folks, because yeah. uh, we've had a couple of drone stops, we've done a few photography stops, a little bit of video footage. You could easily, what do you reckon, a couple of hours? It's a two hour route, almost on the nail. Um, and even not, probably not going as fast as we, we were going on the straight bits, because I had Ali on the back, I'm always a bit respectful with the pillion. We did it in three hours, but we had an hour off for lunch. Yeah, so it's, I mean, you could quite happily do it in the morning or in the afternoon, or just a very leisurely day ride, you know? Yeah, I mean, the idea of this is you can either meet up, meet your mates in the morning, and then be back to mow the grass in the afternoon, or, you know, travel a bit further and it's just a relaxed little bit in the middle of the day but it's something a little different so you've, it's not the usual weekend ride out but it's still one that's practical to do without having to get a hotel or anything it's short enough to turn up do it get home is that the theme for the all the routes throughout this new book then all the routes of the new book will be about hour and a half to two hours long right so that you have that opportunity to just fit it into your life a bit more easily than the the longer routes where you know, if you've got a five hour ride, that's a full day. And oh, they've stone chipped this bit. No! <laughs> I hate this stuff. The devil's dandruff. It is, isn't it? Mind you, it's not fresh, is it? No, it's mostly been milled off, but there's, there's still enough. I'm not going to push it past in the, the corners. Now, you don't know what you're going to call the new book yet, do you? No, we're still discussing titles. I mean, obviously, it is. It's based on Bikers Britain. It's a similar kind of idea, but it is very much focused on those nice little easy to fit in ride out routes. Gotcha. So we're trying to get lots of rides in, so that there's good coverage. So there'll always be, wherever you are in the country, there'll always be two or three that are quite accessible. Well, if you go to www.simonweir.co.uk, you'll need to be on a PC, not on a mobile. There is a day trips page, which has hundreds of routes. So ones like this that are going to go in the new book, are already going up there as they get kind of road tested and approved and all the ones from the existing books there are versions up there the ones from the the older books some of those are slightly different as i've improved them just to keep track of the changes in the roads but yeah there there are all versions up there some of the titles are a bit different but uh, most of the things you need are on my website they're 70 pence each a whole 70p <laughs> Well, folks, that's us. We're here at the place we started earlier this morning. Hope you've enjoyed this ride. Simon, thank you very much for taking us along. It's a pleasure. I'm looking forward to cracking on with this. Folks, if you've enjoyed it, if you like the idea of having video versions of all these routes, let us know in the comments down below. All right, look after yourselves. Keep doing your thing. Look after those that you love. But most importantly, most importantly, live your life. woo -ha! This is a nice little country road, quiet as anything whilst we set up. Hit record, M25. <laughs> On a lorry now. White van, that's for you, TMF. Oh, you fucking kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> that was shit. We'll do it again, hang on. Another truck. <laughs> yeah.